Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and we're almost there. We're almost to the end of individual Lamin Cat previews. It's been a long, strange trip, but we do have another day left. In this video, we have a crap load of split cards, a crazy awesome commander land, some constructed goodness, and a lot more. So prepare yourselves for more Amon Cat ridiculousness. I do hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, remember to hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Gideon's Intervention is two of anything and two white for an enchantment. As the intervention enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Your opponent can't cast spells with the chosen name, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you, and permanence you control by sources with the chosen name. Well, here we finally see Gideon take action in the story, after basically watching Amonkhet fall to a dumpster fire over the past few spotlight cards. Guess he just couldn't take it anymore. If we're talking playability, this is a more expensive Nevermore, except with an added clause dealing with already cast copies of the card. That's pretty sick. As pointed out already, it's a bit ironic that if this card does see play, it's probably going to stop Gideon more than anything else because Gideon is crazy stupid right now. For a card this specific, I expect sideboard usage in standard if anything at all, but in a meta where entire strategies depend on a single card, it could see play, it's a huge combo hoser. Oketra's Attendant is 3 of anything and 2 white for a 3-3 three, three bird soldier with flying, cycling costing 2, and embalm costing 3 of anything and 2 white, yes, more cycling and embalm on the same card, please, it's genius. You discard the card for generic mana, cycling it away and replacing it with something more useful in the early game, then you can embalm the attendant back because it's already in your graveyard. We need more cards like this. Limited powerhouse, for sure, absolutely love the card's design, I wish we had more like it. Commit is 4 mana for an instant, put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. Memory is 4 of anything and 2 blue for a sorcery with aftermath. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws 7 cards. Wow, now this is a blue card. Commit is stronger than you might think at first glance. It's a counter spell, but it's also gaining you a lot of tempo by forcing the card back into your opponent's library, essentially cutting them off from a new draw two turns from now. That's a relatively straightforward ability, but the reason this card is a rare? Memory. With the vague reminder of Day's Undoing, memory changes the course of the game, but in doing that, you give your opponent first action with a full new group of cards. There's a lot of danger in that, unless you have way more than 6 mana, which I doubt you will. However, memory does synergize really well with Kefnet, enabling him immediately. Could be something there. I'll have to test with it to really know its potential, but both Commit and Memory are powerful in their own right and deserve the rare designation, so it's strong stuff. Hieroglyphic Illumination is 4 mana for an instant with cycling costing 1 blue, draw 2 cards. This might be one of my favorite designs in the entire set. So what you're actually looking at is a 1 mana cantrip that can sometimes draw you 2 cards if you have the extra mana towards the end of the game or on your opponent's turn when they don't do anything while your shields are up. The card may have cycling below draw two cards, but that's going to be its primary purpose, and I love that. This is pretty decent in terms of control cantrips. It does everything you want. Draws early, draws late, takes advantage of your open mana if your opponent doesn't do anything. It really all hinges on this having instant speed. That's the game changer for me. I love this card. I think it's solidly playable. I'm a big fan. Vizier of Many Faces is two of anything and two blue for a 0, zero shapeshifter cleric with bomb costing three of anything and two blue. You may have the Vizier enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except if the Vizier was embalmed. The token has no mana cost, it's white, and it's a zombie in addition to its other types. Wow, okay, this is super annoying. This is clone, except you get to do it twice, and the second time you clone something, when you embalm the Vizier, whatever you clone is now white and a zombie. Okay, now that we have that cleared up, this is awesome. Another great upgrade to the normal clone, you get to copy something twice. Or copy two different things, and like most other clones, the Vizier doesn't target, which means you have open season on whatever you want. Another commander mainstay for sure, being able to clone the most powerful creature on the battlefield has always been strong, but doubling up on that for a reasonable cost of 5 mana, yeah, I'll take that all day. Supremely good, I'm thinking Brago or Riku, maybe even Rune, this is super strong. Dispossess is 3 mana for a sorcery. Name an artifact card, search target player's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with that name and exile them. Then that player shuffles their library. Wow. Another insane artifact, hey, card, and Amonkhet. This one is so specifically targeting Heart of Kirin, I can't even handle it. Now maybe another artifact will come through and just be awful to deal with. Maybe it'll be Torrential Gearhulk or Scrap Heap Scrounger. We'll just keep driving everyone nuts. I don't know. But what I do know, Dispossess is Lost Legacy for Artifacts, and it's going to do its job well. 
Artifacts are seriously taking a beating in this set. My goodness, talk about overcompensating. Jeez. Shadow of the Grave is two mana for an instant. Return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that you cycled or discarded this turn. <laughs> okay, sure. The first thing I thought of when I saw this card, Yagma's Will. Now, I know these two cards have basically nothing in common, but I can't help but compare the value. Obviously, again, Shadow is nowhere near Yagma's Will, but the card gets you back so much value. Think about all the cycling and discarding you're going to be doing with Amonkhet cards. You can discard cards you actually need, then just get them back. For a cheap cost, at instant speed, what if you ran this with Hazaret or News Constrictor? Could be hilarious and standard, but beyond that, you do realize that Wheel of Fortune forces you to discard your hand, right? Imagine cycling your hand into this and then returning everything you discarded. How redonk is that? Shadow of the Grave is deceptively strong, and we absolutely haven't even begun to abuse it. That ability is so powerful, trust me. Blood Fury Militant is two mana for a 4-3 Minotaur Warrior. When it enters the battlefield, discard a card. Wait, what? How in the world is this fair? Two mana for a 4-3 and the drawback is upside in the right deck. Hazaret loves the crap out of this thing. Which makes sense, considering as part of Hazaret's army or tribe or whatever. Blood Fury Militant is powerful. It's absolutely standard playable. The thing is a two mana 4-3 with upside, because that makes sense. This is actually unbelievable. I can see a red, black, or mono red deck coming together right now. This is going to be hectic beyond belief. Blood Fury Militant, you are downright stupid. You're a stupid card. It's a ridiculous card. Wow. Harvest Season is 3 mana for a sorcery. Search your library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of tapped creatures you control, and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Shuffle your library. I can think of literally a million places this card wants to be. In Standard with Cryptolith Rite, absolutely. Satan, Crozan Protector in Commander, Wart the Raid Mother in Commander, Titania in Commander. Look, this card is absolutely busted beyond belief in Commander. I think that's clear. You get to spend very little mana to do something absolutely gigantic, and all you need to do is tap creatures. Do you realize how friggin' easy that is? Harvest Season is going to be one of the better Commander cards to come out of this set. Green is on fire right now. Why is everything so unreal? Beginning is two of anything in one white for an instant. Create two 1-1 one, one white warrior creature tokens with vigilance. End is two of anything in one black for a sorcery with aftermath. As an additional cost to cast finish, sacrifice a creature, destroy target creature. Okay, this is a split card I can get behind, mainly for limited play. You get two relevant cards in an upgraded raise the alarm and bone splinters, and one of them fuels the other, which is great synergy. It isn't the flashiest card out there, but for those players in Black, White, and Almond Cat Limited, this will absolutely be a solid include in your deck. Finally, a split card without a super high cost and lackluster benefits. Thank you. Spring is two of anything and one green for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Pretty straightforward. Mind is four of anything and two blue for an instant with aftermath. Draw two cards. Thank you! Finally we have an instant speed aftermath! Now I know that it's pretty expensive. I do, I get that, but I don't care. Especially in limited, this is a strong card there. You get to mana fix with spring, and then at instant speed, whenever you have an open turn, you get two cards. That is good. Expensive? Yes. But still good. Is it just me, or is Torrential Gearhawk becoming better and better every time we see a new split card? Seriously, that construct is going to go ham in standard if any of these blue split cards break out. Cascading Cataracts is an indestructible land card that you can tap to add one colorless to your mana pool. You can also pay five mana and tap it to add five mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool. Okay, what is supremely a bizarre card? First things first, it has indestructible, which means that your opponent's Armageddon spells in Commander that are designed to make you hate yourself aren't going to work on this. I do enjoy that. Second, this is some of the best mana fixing I've ever seen. 5 mana of anything to create 5 mana of anything? Now that's what I call fixing. Obviously this land is meant for commander, obviously, where I'm sure it's going to be stable until the end of time. If you make it a creature, it's still indestructible, that's cool, and in any 4-5 to five color deck you're looking at a cheat code to perfect mana. So yeah, great card, I'm obviously a fan, and that artwork, holy butts. Cradle of the Accursed is a land desert that you can tap to add 1 colorless mana to your mana pool. You can also pay 3 mana, tap it, and sacrifice it to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token, activate only as a sorcery. I quite enjoy this card. Mana early game that turns into a creature in the late game, I'll take it. In limited decks where you can afford to dilute your mana fixing a bit, this is a nice 2-2 when you need it. It does suck that it produces the zombie at sorcery speed, but if we're being honest, an instant speed activation would be a pretty big rarity shift. Regardless, I think it's a fine card for limited, so count me in.
Oh, come on. Grasping Dunes is a land desert that you can tap to add one colorless mana to your mana pool. You can also pay one mana, tap it, and sacrifice it to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Another desert that's a victim of camel. Wait a second. Camel stops damage, not minus one, minus one counters. Yes! Camel's even worse now! Camel can't even stop this desert! Yes, die! Camel, die! Thank you, Bolus! Thank you so much! And that's going to do it for today's Omnicat preview video. What do you think? Are there any cards in here that stick out to you? Honestly, I think we're looking at more and more solid constructed cards as the days go on. I can't imagine Standard being as boring as it is now in a month. I just can't. Hopefully we'll see some craziness happen. On that note, do you have any ideas about what you're going to build? See anything that inspires you? Leave me all your thoughts in the comments and we'll talk about it. Also, be sure to stay tuned to the channel for the latest and most reliable Amonkhet spoiler information you could ever need. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Amonkhet preview season is almost over, which means that the set is coming out pretty soon. Now is the time to pre-order if you haven't already. If you don't have a local game store or yours is charging way, way too much, TCG Player has boxes for sale right now for $91 each. Totally a fair price. Just click the link on the screen. Helps the channel. We all win. Enjoy.